Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser. We're starting with EIU women's basketball coach Lee Buchanan. And coach, congratulations are somewhat in store. The fact that you guys have clinched at least a share of your division title now. Right. Still some work left to go and what we're going to talk about the work left sure. to go. But, but congratulations at least on that part of it. Well, I appreciate it, but you don't really get anything for a tie. Yeah. So, you know, we, we got a lot of work ahead of us. And, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, what we've done thus far is attributed to the players to, to buying into what we're trying to teach them and, and uh, going out and, and executing the game plan that we put in front of them each game. And, you know, as we've talked, each game is the most important one, and, and Saturday will be our most important game coming up. Now, Saturday you guys will play Belmont, and two weeks ago when we, when we talked about Belmont, it was okay – you guys are going to be playing the other division leader as a right. division leader. They've slipped off a little bit the yeah. last couple of weeks, and I don't know if that's – I don't know their schedule well enough to know right. if that's them playing teams in their side now a second time, and, right. and now they've seen them once, and so there's some familiarity. Well, I, I think that's part of it. I also think, you know, with them being new to the conference, nobody really knew how to play them at first, and so I think we're fortunate to have them at least towards the end of the season. Yeah. And, and then they've also had a, a, an interesting schedule where they had a, a big weak gap in there. and. And that does affect teams differently. I felt like our, our gaps helped us and helped us mentally and helped us physically, and, and maybe it didn't help them as much. So, uh, But, you know, they're a good club. Uh, they, they throw a lot of different things at you, and, uh, and we're going to have to be ready for them. Now, we'll recap a little bit about this past weekend. You guys got two wins. You beat Murray State on Saturday, came back and beat Austin P last night on Monday here in the building. Got a little bit of a win streak going mm -hmm. now. I know for the players it, it had to feel good to beat Murray State because that's one of the teams that's beaten yeah. you this year. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting. Murray's players and our players, uh, are they like each other. They talk to each other a lot off the floor. And, and uh, so it's it's one of those games where it's a natural rivalry because you don't want to be shown up by your friend, yeah. you know. So uh, they got us down there. And, and I, I didn't really have to say a whole lot to our players this week or last week to, to get them ready for the Murray game. It's always a big game. And, and I thought we did our, probably our deep, best defensive job of the year, really sat down underneath them, made them, uh, didn't let them run, run their stuff and turned them into basically a dribble drive and shoot it. And, they weren't hitting, and uh, I was really, really pleased with our defense. It was a big win for our program. Now, that night you also had some milestones, and you had a couple milestones actually this past week. That night, Sidney Mitchell became yep. the third player on the current team to get in the 1,000-point club, and that's got to – I know sometimes people don't – they look at milestones, but right. in women's basketball, 1,000 points is really a big milestone. It really is, and, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I've known those all our seniors since they walked on this campus, and you never look at a player when, they're, when they first walk on campus saying, boy, she's going to be a 1,000-point score or a 1,000 rebound, whatever it may be. But, you know, and, and with Sydney being hurt early in the year, there was questions whether she's going to make it, but she's, she's really turned it on here in conference season. And, and uh, we, we've kept an eye on it, and I, I'm really glad that she got it. And it, it's, uh, you know, it's a special milestone for her and, and for her teammates. I think her teammates were just as happy for her as she was about getting the record. Now, you came back the, the next day, you beat Austin P, a team that's not the Austin P of old. They, right. gave, they gave you, once again, a, a, a tough fight yeah, early on, yeah. and then you guys kind of got into your rhythm yeah. and were able to really stretch out the distance. Yeah, down there at their place, they jumped on us 12 to 2. And, and again, uh, you know, Monday night, they, they jumped on us a little bit. I think we were down four or five points early. and. Uh, this time they played us zone, and, and uh, we hadn't seen zone in a few games, so we, it took us a few few trips up and down the floor to get used to it. But we really shot the ball well in the second half. But I thought our defense really picked up from about the 10-minute mark on and of the first half and, and uh, really tried to take them out of what they wanted to do, and nothing became easy for them anymore. Now, we talked milestones. We talked Sydney hit the 1,000 points in the game of Murray. Right. Kelsey Wiss became Eastern's career leading three-point shooter against Austin P. Mm -hmm. I know having been – a player that played against Austin P in right. some, some crucial games that they lost in the OVC tournament. That's got to be a little bit sweet for her to get sure. it against a team like that. Yeah, she's certainly not a numbers <laughs> person. She just didn't want to know how close she was. And uh, But we've all had an eye on it for her. And uh, again, uh, when she hit her, her three-pointer to, to, to set the all-time mark, I think her teammates were just as happy for her as anybody. And, uh, you know, it's it's a special milestone. And I told the players after the game, like, you got to understand, like, that's the most threes anybody's hit in the history of this program. It's quite an accomplishment. And, I, and then I turned to Kelsey and I said, let's not stop here. Let's keep it going. So, uh, you know, she's a terrific shooter, and, and we've been able to uh, use her in a different light uh, at times, getting her some open shots. And she spoiled us a little bit at times. We feel like no matter when she shoots it, it's going to go in. So I, I just hope she continues this uh, record and just blows it out of the water. And since we're on records, I'll just keep talking about them. The other one that, that – isn't is more of a game record. Asabi had the yeah. the record for for blocks in a game, and I know you have to be happy about that. If you look, put her two games together right. this past weekend, she did some of the intangible things. Right. The the lunchbox work, as right. we like to say, is she got the block shots, got yeah. the rebounds. 
she's becoming kind of that physical player yeah. inside that I know you guys wanted her to be. Well, and it's amazing because uh, a lot of European players don't like all that physical contact. And last year, boy, if you'd have told her to go down <laughs> guard on the block, she didn't have any interest in that. And this year, she she's accepted that role a little bit. And early in the season, we decided to defensively to move her in and guard uh, a true five and allow Mariah to guard a four out on the floor a little bit. And Mariah's a little more athletic, and Sami's a big big young lady uh, with long arms and can block shots. So. I think over the weekend she had 12 blocks all together and, and she's been doing a really, really good job defensively in the post. And she's hard to shoot over and she's a pretty good athlete, so she moves her feet. She can guard out on the floor. So it's really gave us a defensive boost here in the last month with her ability to, to, to guard the post and, and Mariah's ability to guard out on the perimeter. Now, we'll talk a little bit about Belmont. I, I saw you watching film in there. This is really an inauguration for yeah. you guys because a lot of times some of the teams that you play, you'll play in non-conference right. or you play a lot of people that played them. Other than people in the league, you guys haven't, you've right. never played Belmont, no. so you're, you're just kind of all new to what they do. What, what have you seen that maybe you're, you're going to have to be prepared well, for? Well, it's an unusual game because usually, you know, you've, you've played somebody along the way at some point in time and you know some of the players' tendencies. So now we're trying to learn tendencies all off the film. And uh, now the good news is they haven't played us and they don't know our tendencies either. So. Uh, but you know they've got a they've got a big post inside. Uh, they run a uh, similar three out two in uh, Kansas uh, high low game like we do at times. Uh, they can shoot threes and, and they're they're traditionally a man to man team and uh, they're they're not as interested in playing as fast as we are. They're they're average about 62 63 points a game and they try to control tempo and try to execute their offenses. So again, it's going to become a on the defensive end. We've got to take them out of their comfort zone, make them shoot shots they're not comfortable, and then when they miss, we got to rebound and run and really up tempo the game. Now you guys are kind of getting back in this rhythm again, where you're back on the Saturday, Monday, Saturday. Next week you won't play on Monday. You're, right. you're actually going to finish in a, the way the old style schedule yeah. used to be. They like where you're going to finish Thursday, Saturday at Martin and Edwardsville. How do you kind of, I guess, approach the, these last three games with getting the rest and getting the practices to make sure that when you guys get in the most important right. games of the year in the tournament sure. that everybody's kind of mentally focused? Well, um, we've tried to, to try to do that somewhat throughout the whole season. You know, uh, uh, even though Kenya plays a lot of minutes, we've tried to cut some of those minutes back and, and tried to save her legs as much as we can. Uh, right now, I think we've got a confident basketball team, a team that, that enjoys being on the practice floor, a team that enjoys playing in the games. And so, uh, you know, we, we take one day at a time. We try to work on ourselves. Again, we always focus on ourselves. We're trying to we, we talk about not who we play, but how we play, and and I and I think the players have really bought into that. And I mean, this is what we've been working for all year. So, uh, you know, we've got Belmont on Saturday, and then we'll have a few days to prepare for that Thursday Saturday swing of the old time style. And and uh, again, we'll just take one game at a time and see how see how things go. Well, Coach, best of luck in that. Three Thank big you. games coming up down the stretch here, and it'll all start this Saturday right here at four o'clock in Lance Arena, place where you guys have had a great deal of success. So hopefully that yeah. keeps going. Best of luck in those. Remember, you can see that game on WIU. It's a TV only due to the men playing at Northern Illinois at three o'clock. You can also watch it on the OVC Digital Network to get the audio version of it if you don't live in the viewing area, which hopefully. You're here in the arena yeah. and you're watching it in person, so I know do some shameless self-promotion for the for the <laughs> TV station, the radio station, but we'd like to have you here cheering loud in Lance Arena. We'll be right back with this week in EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Men's basketball is now five and nine in the OVC. The Panthers go one and one at Lance Arena, a loss to Austin P and a 79-70 win over Murray State. Women's basketball continues their winning ways with three wins at Lance Arena over Oakland City, Murray State, and winning Monday night 88-59 over Austin P. The Panthers are now 11-2 in the OVC and are currently the top seed in the upcoming OVC tournament. Indoor track hosted the EIU Friday night special at the Lance Fieldhouse, and the Panthers picked up nine first place finishes. Panther baseball gets the 2013 season underway in Jackson, Mississippi at the Jackson State Tourney. EIU starts the season 1-3, winning an extra inning affair against host Jackson State 4-3. Panther softball also got the 2013 season going. They start the season 1-3 at the Alabama State Tourney, winning a five-inning match against Alabama State 12-0. Men's tennis is now 3-1 on the season, winning against Dayton in Danville, Illinois 5-2. Women's tennis is now 2-2 on the season after falling at Southern Illinois 7-0. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Wednesday, swimming is at the Summit League Championships in Rochester, Michigan. And men's basketball is back at Lance Arena as they take on the top team in the OVC, Belmont. You can watch that game on WEIU-TV or listen to it on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. On Thursday and Friday, swimming continues action at the Summit League Championships. 
Also on Friday, Indoor Track hosts the OVC Indoor Championships at the Lance Fieldhouse with competition starting at 1.30. And Panther Baseball begins a weekend series at Southern Mississippi. On Saturday, a full slate of Panther athletic teams in action. Swimming wraps up competition at the Summit League Championships. Panther softball is at the Louisville Cardinal Tourney with a 9 o'clock match against Buffalo. Indoor track hosts day two of the OVC Indoor Championships at the Lance Fieldhouse starting at 9.30. Baseball continues action at the Southern Miss Tourney against Alcorn State at noon. Women's tennis is at Indianapolis for a noon match. Softball with their second game of the day at the Louisville Cardinal Tourney as they take on Kent State at 2 o'clock. And men's basketball competes in the Bracket Busters at Northern Illinois at 3 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. Women's basketball continues OVC play at Lance Arena as they take on Belmont at 4 o'clock. You can watch that game on WEIU TV. On Sunday, softball continues action at the Louisville Cardinal Tourney as they take on Buffalo at 9 o'clock. Baseball wraps up action at the Southern Miss Tourney with an 11 o'clock game against Missouri State. And softball finishes their play at the Louisville Cardinal Tourney against the host Cardinal at 2 o'clock. And women's tennis is in Peoria to take on Bradley at 2 o'clock. And next Tuesday, men's basketball is back in Chicago as they take on Chicago State at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kerbasyun. Into the lane to Akers. Akers dribbling, pass it back out to Piper. 12 to shoot. Piper at the point, goes high post, Blanford works down the lane, through traffic, laid it in and got fouled. Strong move to the hoop for Blanford. Eastern Illinois Panther basketball is on WEIU. The EIU men continue their push to march as OVC East leader Belmont comes to Lance Arena. It's the Panthers and Bruins, Wednesday at 7. WEIU is your home for Panther basketball. Lock them down. Team, one, two, three. Team. Go. Takes all five to lock them down. Let's go. Eastern Illinois Panther Basketball is on WEIU with the OVC tournament right around the corner. Division leaders meet at Lance Arena as Eastern Illinois and Belmont meet in a possible preview of the OVC championship game. It's the Panthers and Bruins Saturday at 4. WEIU is your home for Panther Basketball. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk. We're now joined by EIU men's basketball coach Jay Spoonhauer. And coach, I guess what a weekend. I know you guys, you don't want to live on the excitement too high and it, probably part of it's going to be getting the guys to come back down. But the win against McMurray and it was, was exciting with the crowd and everything else that was around it. Yeah, you want to enjoy, you know, when you've had a year where you haven't won a whole lot of games, you, you know, you'd have to be a pretty mean-spirited guy and not let them enjoy it a little bit. Uh, but the, you know, that you're, what you're saying is right. The reality is you've got another really good team. I mean, just as good as, as Murray coming in. Um, and it's a short turnaround. It's a short week for us because typically these games are on Thursday and we've moved it to Wednesday. And, um, you know, it'll be, we know how hard it'll be. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the games this past week were, we, we just really, we, we really, had, we're two different teams. I mean, the, the game against Austin P, we just didn't have, there was a lot of things we just didn't do very well. And, and if we're not 100% dialed in on what we're doing, then, you know, we have a hard time. On the flip side, against Murray, we were we concentrated, we took care of the ball, we made shots when they were there, we played smart, we attacked when we were supposed to. So, you know, if you do that, you'll have a chance to beat a team like Murray. But you have to do it right all the time. And, and for the most part, we did. Now, in that game, you talked about you guys stayed focused. Once again, we're able to, to win the battle on the glass, won the rebounding war. And in this kind of streak you guys have had going over about the last month, the games where you've been able to really control the glass and, and be able to get offensive putbacks, you guys have, have been right in them and had some success. Yeah, and that comes from basically our shot selection, handling the ball long enough to get something good. And it doesn't always necessarily mean the amount of time you spend handling the ball. I mean, for the most part, if you make the defense work and wait for them to break down, you're going to get a better shot. But that doesn't mean we're saying, hey, you have to pass it this many times or you have to do this because I, I think part of the – Part of our success in, against Murray was that we did push it when it was available, and the times that we pushed it, we made it. You know, we, we made shots, and that's really the important thing. Is if you're going to push it against Murray, and you're going to shoot quick shots, they better go in. 
because if they don't, now the game gets going fast and that's not good for us. Uh, it'll be the same thing against Belmont. They play up tempo. They push the they push the tempo, and um, so you know it's one of those things that you 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 want to handle the ball and want to do right, and then you get you a good shot, and then if you force the defense to help a little bit, that's how you can get Sherman in there on the glass and Mo in there on the glass because they've got an advantage. If the defense is always between you and the bucket, it's hard to get a rebound. Now, you, you talked about you guys are coming off. You played Austin play. You played Murray. There were teams you had already seen once, so the scouting report that you kind of could say, remember, they did this well. Yeah. They didn't do this as well. You guys are now playing a Belmont team that you haven't seen yet, and this late in the year, is that sometimes easier or harder to prepare for that given something entirely new to a team? Yeah, it's it's probably harder. I mean, you know, we knew we weren't going to see Belmont until the very end, and so we we haven't thought a whole lot about them for obvious reasons. We had games that were, you know, that we really needed to concentrate on that were in our side of the division, and I'm sure the same thing is for them. They're trying to beat Tennessee State, and they're trying to beat the teams over on their side. Um, so this is a... I think everybody in the league has a deal like this where they have a late game against the other side. Um, and it'll be, you know, especially with us shortening the, the preparation time, the, the thing about it is is that at this point you're, you're at least on our end, we're, you know, you're, you are what you are, and you're not going to go out and make a bunch of wholesale changes just for a game. Um, you've got to try to do the things that you do and do them well and then know a little bit about what they're doing. The thing is, is they do so many things well that – it's, you, you, we're not going to go out and say, hey, we need to stop dribble penetration and we need to get to their three shooters and we've got to guard these actions and they also back cut. So, come on. I mean, they're not, you're not going to cover all those things. You just do the best you can on all of them. Now, the other thing the game you guys will have this week is you guys will play Northern Illinois in the Bracket Buster. The, the, it's been a kind of a good thing for, I think, for schools like Eastern Illinois over the years, maybe not so much to get the game late in February, but more in getting the other return. game, the return game that you get the, the following year. I don't know if you've been part of the Bracket Buster or not, but how do you kind of, I guess, approach your first time doing it? No, I'm just going to go <laughs> play the game. I mean, I don't have any, you know, you all have a lot more opinions on it than I do, and the guys, the other coaches in the league, some of them like it, some of them really despise it. <laughs> it doesn't much matter because it's going away. Uh, I can see where it would, if you, if you were sent, that's the reason we moved this game to Wednesday mm -hmm. is because you don't know where you're going to be sent. Yeah. And so the more time, I mean, you think about it, if we'd played the Belmont game on Thursday and then had, had to go to uh, Seattle, that might have yeah. been rough. As it is, we're going to the Calvin, and that's not too, too tough to, to get booked and travel. Uh, but it, it is, you know, that's a concern. The, it will be nice. It's good. It is good for your scheduling because we all have a difficult time scheduling. Some teams really have a hard time scheduling. I mean, you can imagine if you're Belmont, how hard is it to get a really good team to come to your gym? It's very hard. Uh, us right now, there's you know people aren't too worried about coming here, and so we want to get to the point where people don't want to come play so that we can complain about not being able to play people. Now, the other game that's going to fall in between when we tape these two shows is you guys will play Chicago State next Tuesday. That's a game that. I know part of when you put a, a schedule together, you put that in there because when you were looking at it, there was a kind of a somewhat of a gap between when you would play before you played Edwardsville and wanted right. to get a little bit of work in there. But also you wanted to be able to get a return game here next year when you're starting to put together a future schedule. Yeah, you, you know, you, you um, I can't even recall if that game was already scheduled when we got here or not in terms of the date. But it is, in a, it's really, even though it doesn't seem like it'd be in a good spot, it is. You don't want to have... You get into a rhythm during a season, and you don't want to have huge gaps in your schedule. You don't want to have a nine or ten day gap, and that, I think that's kind of what it would have been. Um, so, or at least you know a week long gap. Uh, so, it's you know playing in Chicago is, is good for us. Going up just like going to Northern Illinois, going because we recruit up there, and so uh, going up and playing games there is something we want to try to do all the time. Now, you guys will go on the road there. Uh, you've been at home here for the last four conference games, and you kind of have talked all along that the numbers to try to get to six got a lot closer. Well, it was five. We were, we're, we're trying to get to five, 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 five so now, we're, now we're going to get greedy, yeah. So, so you have Belmont then, then you have Edwardsville. How do you get the guys to focus? I, I know it's they want to win every game, but the games that are at the end of the day the most important are the two conference games out of the four. Do you, do you kind of do you have to pull them back a little bit and make sure that they're, they're not – not Underlooking really. the other two games, you are um, <laughs> you're trying to play as well as you can every night. 
And so you don't really talk about, I mean, we haven't started preparing for Northern Illinois or Chicago State, so I don't know, maybe, I'll, maybe <laughs> I will feel different. But the, the, uh, the reality is, is we're trying to just play well. You know, and if, if you go out and play well and compete, and, uh, you know, it's just like the Murray game. If we hadn't won the game, still would have felt pretty good um, because we competed well. We played smart. We did the right things. That'll be the same thing we'll try to do against Belmont and may or may not in, you know, res in a good result for us. And then you'll just try to, you know, for, it's really been more about us and what we do. We can't take people out of what they do very well. We just can't. And so we're just trying to do the things we can we can control and and if it works out that we get a win fine but there's been other games that we've done pretty well and haven't won and we've been i've been fine with it and, and the guys have been fine that, i think that's part of why their attitude's been good okay coach well best of luck in that you guys will start this three game series between shows when we tape here wednesday seven o'clock here in lance arena this show airs at six o'clock on wiu hopefully you'll come out here and watch belmont i know a lot of people have talked about them until they lost two out of the last three they were getting some consideration for the top 25 so it's a really yeah. good team that people want to come out and see and, and see how eastern kind of stacks up well, against some of the best in the league they're good they're not going you're not going to have any trouble figuring out which <laughs> one's belmont <laughs> All right, well, best of luck, Coach, and we'll see everybody at Lance Arena on 7 o'clock. We're going to wrap up this week's show. We're going to show some of the highlights of the Dahmer Camp jersey retirement from this past weekend's win over Murray State and also some of the highlights from that game. Thanks for watching Panther Sports Talk. 2003 was the last year you played at Eastern, spring of 2003. Henry scored 2,602 points in his career, most ever at Eastern, most ever in the OVC. That's a real accomplishment when you look at some of the names of guys that have, that have played in the OVC. What are the main memories you take from your time at Eastern, Henry? Wow. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, going to the NCAA tournament and that whole experience, I think the actual game that we won to, to uh, qualify the NCAA tournament and driving back here to have an impromptu uh, pep rally, I guess, is one of the, the best, best moments I've had. But there's so many fond memories with teammates. Uh, and I was able to play with a lot of great players like Kyle Hill and Mark Polite and even Jack Owens and so, so many other great guys to be around. I, I, the, we, the program isn't long enough. <laughs> now, you, for people that don't remember, Henry was in the uh, top five in the nation in scoring all three years as a sophomore, junior, and senior. But when you were a sophomore is when you went to the NCAA tournament in 2001. Kyle Hill was, I think, second in the nation. You were fifth in the nation in scoring. That's the only time that's ever happened where one team had two of the top five. That was a really special group, and I think you've got, what, three or four of those guys back here tonight, don't you? Uh, yeah, and, uh, it's great to see them. Uh, Jan Thompson, Tom Bergman are here for sure. And uh, I always say they're some of the most unselfish guys that I ever played with up even until now. And... Uh, Wow. And uh, you did, they're, they're, you did that they once were, in a while, too. <laughs> they that's were, what you usually did, though, those jump shots. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, that was my strength. But that, that's young legs right there. <laughs> Hopefully after the injury, I can still get back to that. We, uh, we remember you as a jump shooter here. Is that still your, uh, your game in Europe? Uh, when all else fails. Uh, I, I mean, I know my strength. And jump shooting is my strength. That's why I, I guess you could say my bread and butter. But. With age, I think uh, I've definitely developed my game. I still continue to work to develop my game even now. Now, Henry holds a lot of the Eastern school records, but ones we don't think of, Henry, third in all-time rebounds at Eastern, sixth in all-time block shots, eighth in steals. I mean, you uh, you piled up a whole bunch of numbers. You stuffed the stat sheet. You don't, not, weren't up there in assists, I noticed. So. <laughs> um, wow, some of those I didn't know. I mean rebounds I'm surprised but uh I mean I'm I know the coaches here they push me to be the best player I can be and they definitely wanted me to play on both ends of the court so um I mean I think most of those stats are just a testament to them and how hard they pushed me and wanted me to work how much longer do you think you figure to play professionally Henry oh I mean God willing as long as the knees and the body stays healthy um uh, I'd like to play at least another three two three more years Making the presentation of a framed retired jersey at center court are EIU Director of Athletics Barbara Burke and former head men's basketball coach Rick Samuels. Panther fans at this time join us as East Illinois officially retires the number 44 in honor of former men's basketball standout Henry Donnerkamp.
Henry Domerkantz, number 44, has not been worn since Henry played. It's been retired, Jack, for 10 years, kind of unofficially. Henry University, the hand has retired number 44 in the rafters of Lance Serena. Only the second number retired uh, in men's basketball at Eastern. 44 for Domerkantz and double zero for Kevin Duckworth, the two retired numbers. Yeah, pretty select company. Henry, just a tremendous career, no question about that, at the IU, and uh, what, a great, what a great family as well. To see extended versions of Mike Brad's interview with Henry Domerkant and Henry Domerkant's Jersey Retirement Ceremony, visit weiu.net, and then click on WEIU Sports, and then the YouTube link.